Hello and welcome back to Stranded Deep. We find ourselves once again in the island editor looking at our island which we made, which we are currently making, which is under construction. It is, it is huge actually, it's very very big. It's uh, another session, another day in fact. But uh, what we've done so far is we have actually blocked in the islands. So the island is this kind of uh, this large circular shape with the Y-shaped river running through it. We have a load of points of interest. This area out here with the walkways and the little island out to sea. These sea forts linked with a bunch of other walkways, which we know because for some reason these walkways here, because they are above the, uh, the level of the sand, they're going to have grass on them when we eventually get into the game. And, 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 and another little broken sea stack over here with an area of grass on top now 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 what we need to do is we need to kind of uh, smooth off the island so smooth off the terrain a bit and then we need to start putting foliage down we need to start really getting the foliage in now the foliage is really good because it's going to be visible for a, a lot uh, a lot further distance than these rocks the lod on foliage things like trees and stuff actually uh, actually goes quite a long way so we can use the foliage to uh, to sort of break up these large grey masses. We can also use it to uh, mask things off and actually just make things look a little bit more pretty and interesting. So first of all, we're going to hit this brush here, the smooth height brush. We're going to turn the C off. Yay! So we're back down to this uh, this kind of delightful plateau, which we made for ourselves. The, the C obviously, uh, while well, the island obviously drops way down there, but that's not a problem. What we need to do is we need to kind of smooth things off around the edge. Now we're going to use uh, the tool here. Now we need to remember that the size and the height actually uh, are maintained through each iteration of this tool. So we're just going to crank that up and I'm just going to go down here. Actually, that's not too bad. It's not too bad around the outside. It's a little bit awkward moving the camera around, but it's not too bad around the outside of the island. I'm going to change the size of the brush down and then if we just brush around because what we want to avoid are these kind of uh, these sort of triangle areas along these the uh, uh, bits that we've carved out before let's grab the amount and crank it all the way up is that actually changing anything or is the camera a little bit too far away I don't know so we, we just uh, we just want to make sure that there are no obvious uh, triangles sort of like weird bits of geometry we want to smooth things out as much as we can uh, without having, so we want to get rid of like bumps and lumps and things around the edge of the island, uh, like along here, like we've got huge triangles. Is smoothing that out gonna, yeah, kind of just, kind of just evens it out. And any sort of, uh, any kind of pits and stuff like here. So we'll, uh, we'll do the same there. Along this edge. Oh no, that's terrible. Yeah, we'll just, we'll brush along this edge. It's kind of a, is it a necessary step? really if i'm going to be honest not really but it does make things look a little bit more professional especially if you get into the game and you're just like oh well it's you know my island's really nice but if there's a huge like uh like pyramid shaped hole over here and uh the the kind of the the, the shoreline looks a little bit too steep i guess so we're just gonna you know smooth it off so it's not like incredibly steep but also so we don't get those weird sort of uh, bits of geometry. That's nice. Real nice. Right, okay. So I think that's, that's that area done. This area, obviously LOD means that sort of the, the further away the camera is in the editor, uh, the, the less detail you have anyway. But these areas here should be quite obvious. Yeah. This uh, LOD keeps popping in and out because we're moving quite far away. Right, so that's okay around there. There's a bit of lumpy bumpiness going on there anyway, but that's not a problem. It's like a ridge that we had, but we can smooth that off. Um, the reason we're doing it at this point, just before we put the foliage in, because if we start putting things like trees and stuff down and then we start moving the terrain about, now those trees are gonna just float. And that would not be fun for us. Oh yeah, look at, look at that, big, big rough patch over there. So at this point, we're just going to kind of work with the terrain that we've got. We might still carve in little pools and uh, sort of nick, um, nip, sort of nick, nick away, nip, nip away 
nibble away, nibble away at the shore, just to uh, just to give ourselves some interest, maybe some shallow pools and stuff around the other side. Uh, just, just smooth, sort of, ah, that's real nice, real nice, and real necessary as well, by the looks of things. Yep, things like that massive spike of terrain. Don't want that kind of sticking up. That looks odd. Oh yeah, I think. Are we nearly all the way around? Yeah. Yeah, we are. Uh, anything there? Nope, we did a good job on that bit. So that's fine. It's going to brush along here. And along here. And along here. And I think we're all the way around. So that's, uh, that's a good pass on the old island. So we've smoothed off a sort of triangular bumpiness that we might notice once we start playing the game. We can turn the, uh, turn the ocean back on. Boop. Ah, and it looks, it looks all right. It looks fine. So we've got this, uh, sh this deep area here for the sharks to all swim around in. This, this kind of little sandy apron means that once we ram a raft onto the shore, we, uh, we have an area which the sharks can't really get to, I don't think. I mean, it's still probably deep enough for them to get, but it means that the, uh, the, the boat is going to be able to hit this, this kind of shoreline. It's a bit steep in places. Some areas it's, it's very big and sandy, and some areas it's, uh, it's a little bit too, too steep. But sometimes you get that, especially around estuaries and stuff. Um, so it's not, not too, too bad. And we can always change that. We can always just run over an area with the old aggressive smooth tool, which is this one. For some reason, yeah, once you've got the cog selected, you still get the brush indicator. It's a bit odd. So I'll just flatten that down a bit because I don't like the fact it's too high. Areas around here, not too bad. I think it was just, where was I looking? Here. Yeah, all right. Let's, uh, let's push this in a bit. Do we need to do any more? Any more for any more? I think what we could do is probably do something here. So if we grab the uh, raisin lure, just drop the amount down, remembering to drop the amount down, and just kind of uh, make sure we've got lower selected. Wow, even with the amount pushed all the way down, that is... Uh, yeah, that's quite an uh, aggressive, uh, aggressive brush there. Right, so we'll just push this in. We'll just sort of make sure the water can get there. And then hit the smooth and hit the amount up and just sort of smooth off what we've just made. And the idea is we have this kind of little, little shallow pool. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Right, so we've got these, these kind of, um, because otherwise the, the coast is a bit too uniform, I think. So you've, you've got little pools and stuff. There's one there, uh, one over here, and this kind of thing here leading up to the boat. Uh, so we've got point of interest. The cave is a point of interest. This area right here is a point of interest, and these out here are a point of interest. And now we need to start adding in trees and stuff. So we go back to objects, and we will hit up trees. Now the first thing I'm going to do is close. Close misc. Oh no, the raft is not part of misc. All right. So we've got these pine trees, one, two, three pine trees. There is a, uh, a, a, uh, an object limit. That's it. An object limit. Uh, we might also do something with these rocks because I don't really like the way they are at the moment. Um, in fact, let's do the rocks first. Let's get the, uh, let's get the rocks sorted first because it's going to bug me and I don't want it to bug me. So we'll hit clear for one. There we go. Let's grab that. Let's rotate it a little bit. We're just trying to break up this this kind of very uniform edge, I guess. This kind of very uniform rocky edge. Uh, so we've got these, these shapes here. Cool. So it doesn't look like it's like a big old rocky wall. That's, that's exactly what I don't want. Uh, grab this and then just jam it into the ground. Just move it out a little bit. Um, is that going to cause problems for us once we start playing? Probably not. There we go. That's much better. But it kind of, it's like, oh, we've got a load of cliffs and stuff, but hey, uh, there's a bit of a problem. There's no more other cliffs. It, it kind of looks a little bit, that's better. That's better. Yeah. Let's do that. Because otherwise it's like, oh, you got a big rocky wall, and then it kind of stops, and it, it just looks like it's been placed, rather than it looks like it should be part of the world. Now, the other thing we can do is throw in, uh, throw in stuff like, we'll use, in fact, we'll use cliff three for this, uh, drop it down into the sea, give it a little bit of a rotatey rotate, because these are the same items, what we don't want to do 
is have everything kind of rotated in the same way. So if you just keep dragging and dropping, then uh, the main problem you're going to have is that it just looks like you've just put the same item in over and over again. Now, hopefully this has a, oh, it doesn't have a closed base. Fine, okay. Does not have a closed base. That's a little, little annoying. Um, the, the, the reason we're doing this is to give ourselves kind of like little, little stepping stones, a way of hopping over here, because bearing in mind that we can see everything at the moment, let's raise this up a little bit. We can see everything at the moment. Um, when we come to, uh, come to actually play this for, for realsies, this is going to go black at night and during sort of storms and stuff. It also creates like a little uh, little way of crossing the island. So uh, we've got crossing points over here with the bridges, but we've also got these kind of little little uh, little hoppy stone things. Let's jump that into the ground. Is that overkill? Not really. Okay, that, that adds a nice little continuation of that little rock cluster. I know it's a big piece of geometry to slam into the ground, but you know it's uh, it's something. It's something. Um, do we want to make it easy for ourselves to cross? Not really. No, not really. Let's do this. Uh, if we drop that into the sea. Oh, yeah, that's real nice. Ah, real nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. It's just some variation on a, on a theme, basically. The small rocks are okay, but they're not textured. So we're going to be using the cliffs for this. Uh, mining rocks, no. Cliff three. What was cliff three? Do, do, do. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, so that gives us a little. Yeah, all right, let's raise that up a little bit. Yeah, cool. Okay, and we'll do the same over here because I noticed the last item we made, uh, there was an area which didn't have stepping stones, and we just didn't use it. We were just like, oh, no, I'm gonna be scaredy cat and not use that. So uh, if we have these rocks here. It means that if we run around to the end, we can just hop, hop, skip, and a jump. Or even if we, even if we, even if we end up face planting the sea, it's not so bad because at least we've attempted to cross rather than if we'd not attempted at all. So just make sure we are actually on the right object. There we go. Um, and then if we grab, oh, actually, shoreline rocks are always quite fun. No, nope. Uh, cliff, uh, cliff four, cliff four, cliff four. Are we use cliff four yet? No, probably not. Raise that up a little bit, move that over a little bit. I want that pool to be uh, kind of there. We go. So, it's, so we've got these rocks around the entrances to the to the rivers. They had little stepping stones. They're sort of varied each time. It creates a path across the uh, across the river entrances, and you might say, "Hang on a minute." Well, that that means the sharks can't cross, can't swim down the rivers. But sharks aren't going to be swimming down the rivers. I haven't seen them try and swim uh, along the rivers, even though they have the uh, even though we've created deep ones before. They just haven't wanted to do it or haven't had the ability to do it. I, I don't really know. Um, I think, in theory, they what they try to do is avoid swimming into the island. Uh, I have seen it like a tail and a dorsal fin where one has actually got stuck under the island. We're going to hit uh, raise and lower. We're going to hit the amount way down. In fact, oh, set height. Mm. Question. Is that going to mess us up fun time? Don't know. What I want to do is just lower it down. So let's hit the amount. Let's tap there. Now, what's that going to do? All right. That's going to give us. It's not the same as uh, absolutely. Um, lowering lowering the height using uh, raise and lower, but it is just pushing it down a bit, just to create some variation in colour on the bottom of this river, but also to expose a little bit of rock. There we go, just to make it a little bit deeper as well. Cool. So we see that the top of the brush interacting with uh, objects, but it can't affect objects; it only affects terrain, which is fine. So we've got some of this rock exposed in the bottom of the river. We're looking straight down at the moment, which means the camera's going to be a little behaving a little bit weird. We'll brush it in um, kind of along the, along the middle of the river. We're using a very, very low uh, amount, actually. 
which means that the effect the brush is going to have is not not that great not great at all it's going to push some of this down so it's a little bit deeper there we go there we go so it looks like there's some sort of uh, flow rather than sediment build up so it looks like the uh, the water along here is actually doing something cool cool so we'll just do the same thing all through all the way through here we could raise the amount up but i'm not going to because because um i don't want to don't want to we'll just do it along here i just want it to be real gentle real gentle like real gentle it doesn't have to be exposing the rock all the way through we can do it here as well Ugh. It's kind of like brushing in freaking Photoshop. It's like, oh, you're going to be brushing? Yep. All the freaking time. Yep. All right. So we use a smooth, boop, small brush, smooth. Just run back through here. Just to make sure there's no jagged uh, polygons under the water. Probably shouldn't be, but we'll just give it a single pass anyway. There you go. So we've smoothed. We've exposed a little bit of rock. It looks a little bluer, a little bit deeper, which is kind of cool. So now we can just fix this, uh, fix this terrain, and then get ourselves on the. So I hit raise uh, sizes smaller. There we go. <gasps> ah, there we go. Now are these cliffs okay here? Do we want to slam another one into the ground? Another object? Probably. Probably. Uh, if we grab this and just drop it in. So we just expose the very top of it. Yeah. Okay. All right. That works. Works for us, works for our purposes. Uh, Cliff 5. We can just snuggle these things up together. There we go. There we go. As long as there's no like huge gaps that we can fall into and then get stuck forever, like there. So let's move this back a bit. Yeah, there we go. What we don't want to do is sort of make a make a pit, make a death trap, though we, uh, we're running around on top of these rocks and then, oh, oh we've fallen in something like this and then we, we can never get out. Oh no, that, that would be terrible. Terrible, I tells you. Uh, we'll put another sort of rando cliff kind of in here. Uh, let's move it back a bit. There we go. Cool. So there's a kind of a, a rocky, rocky theme, rocky motif going on. Uh, we will hit raise and just kind of raise this area up around edge just so it kind of blends a little bit more evenly with the rock I guess there we go because at the moment it's kind of let camber down slightly as soon as it hits the rock we don't want that what we want is to make it look like the dirt has settled into these kind of like uh, nooks and crevices and stuff and is actually kind of uh, kind of belongs there even though that what we're actually doing is warping the terrain inside the uh, inside the object, so it looks a bit strange. But because these objects are here on the other side, it looks like oh, we got sand here, we got dirt here, and yeah, there's a, like a definite difference. So we'll fill that area in. Uh, this area here could be kind of filled in as well. This area here definitely needs a little bit of dirt, so we don't end up throwing ourselves into a into a gap. How far out can that go? Pretty far out really far out all right and then obviously well, i say obviously but it's probably not obvious uh smooth that back so it's not too lumpy bumpy yeah well it's still a bit still a bit on the lumpo bumpo side but but for what we want it to do not a problem so the smoothing is kind of um definitely something you should take time to do if you are making one of these islands so we have a refined sort of uh, rivers, we, so we've yeah, refined the rivers, we've refined the, the uh, rockiness, so it's less uh, obvious that it's just a big ass wall. And then what we're gonna do is grab some trees. Now we'll go back to the pine trees. <sighs> pine trees, why would you, why you put pine trees in? Boop. Um, because, because they do exist in the world, in the real world, in the island. Of the real now they are huge do i want that there probably not just gonna play around with some positioning first so we'll, we'll hit the pine trees in now you can't angle them but you can rotate them and i would just advise kind of uh rotating rotating these trees as you put them in just by a little bit so they don't look like because they're the same freaking model 
and then just dropping them down a bit so that the trunks aren't the, the bottom of the trunks aren't exposed. So that's something you do. Otherwise, you you end up with a floating tree. But if you don't rotate them, you end up with floating trees that um, very obviously are the same model. Now we're just going to randomly throw these things in. So we'll give them give them a bit of a rotate, and then grab the green and just drop them down a bit. And it looks like what the heck are you doing? What are you doing? Oh no, your your beautiful island. We'll grab this one, which is a smaller size. And again, give it a rotate, just rando rotate, drop it down by a few pixels. And it's like, your, your beautiful island, what what could you possibly, you don't need to rotate that one because we haven't got anything on, the, on that rotation. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's basically just setting a, a density of uh, foliage. What is that? That shadow, weird shadow. Oh, that would explain something. So this shadow here, this kind of big square shadow. I built an island before and I couldn't work out what the hell that was. That has to be something to do with the top of this tree, some sort of geometry that's invisible. Hmm. That's interesting. That's interesting. I thought that was a bug before. I thought I'd place something under the ground and I, I hadn't, uh, hadn't taken into account. So we've reached the maximum Maximum limit for that, I think. Oh, we can place the little ones. Okay, so we we have a uh, like a definite um, upper limit that we can get to. Now I'm only placing these pines on areas of grass because uh, basically what happens in the real world or the world of real is that, uh, especially on islands like this, birds eat seeds. Birds poop seeds because the 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 fruit will go through the the fruit gets digested, uh, but the seeds themselves usually are immune to the digestion process. So we've hit the item limit for that. Big pine trees, yeah. So we're essentially creating a creating a forest here, a forest without speed tree. Cool. Um, so yeah, the birds will will fly many thousands of miles. That's a bit too similar to the tree next to it. There we go. I just don't want them to be the same, uh, like obviously the same height. That seems a bit odd. Uh, we're going to hit an item limit. No, but we look, here we go. So we place this tree in and it's obvious that it's actually, there we go. Just, just drop that in, give it a rotate slightly. Ah, oh, by rotating it, it sticks a trunk out. So I'm going to drop it down a little bit. Cool. Cool. So we have this, this kind of forested area. Uh, we haven't used it. We, do we want to use? Oh, we have used the item limit. So we use the item limit for the pines. Um, yep. It's like, well, you've used the item limit for the pines. Now what? Good question. Good question. Well, we've got other foliage that we can throw in. So if we hit up objects and then we hit in the palm trees. Now, the palm trees, we're only going to put this on the sand. Wait, what? Why would you do that? I, well, why not? Uh, the only thing we can do with uh, pine trees, palm trees, sorry. I'm looking over to the window and I'm like, is that, is that a fly buzzing around? Is that, is that Mr. Fly buzzing around? Probably. Like, he might get, would he, oh, would he get on the recording? Mr. Fly, are you trying to get on the recording? I don't know. Uh, so we're just going to jam these guys kind of um, seemingly at random, but they're only going to be on the, on the sand. And the reason they're only on the sand is because uh, coconuts float and birds don't tend to carry them because they're so big. They're enormous. And they tend to, they, they fall off the trees and they float in the sea and you're like, oh, okay. So they're, they're sort of bobbing around on the ocean waves and then they land on the beach and they become coconutty, coconutty goodness. And so there are definite zones which certain trees will grow and other trees won't. So the palms coast sand and stuff and the pines you want to put on soil otherwise it'll make very little sense very little sense um it's sort of trying to put them on dry soil just kind of popping them around and what i'm doing is putting in a lot more than i think i need i'm just gonna throw in a bunch of them 
Now, because these are all the same height, I don't want to put them all too close together, um, unless there's a bit of terrain which goes kind of up. The other thing I can do is along the river, a click, clicky clacky keyboard. I did look at a new keyboard. Apparently, Cherry makes a silent, um, silent mechanical keyboard. And I'm like, oh wow, a silent mechanical keyboard. Sign me up for one of those. And I looked at the price and it was like a million pounds. I was like, uh, yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. That sounds a little too much, a little too sweet for one's tastes. So we'll stick with the old Logitech's, Log Logitech's? Logitech MK710, I think. It's wireless. It's got a big ass uh, uh, wrist rest, which is cool. So we've thrown in these palm tree ones. We're going to go around palm tree two now, which is very obviously uh, smaller. So we can just put them real close. And kind of clump these guys up. Uh, do we want to clump these guys up? Yeah, just pop them in, give them a little spin. Don't need to pop them all together. Just pop them kind of round. Like pairs of pine, uh, palms. Uh, kind of. Uh, are they a thing in nature? I guess so. We're just popping them around the outside of the island. A lot more than we think we need. Uh, because this computer will certainly handle it. This computer will handle most things without too much difficulty. So we'll just pop them in, give them a little spin. Uh, that is to avoid them looking like they are uh, place items. So we're just placing them rando around the world. We're going to pop a few places that you don't think you need a, a palm tree. I like the sand on these rocky bits, just to, just to cover up some of this grey cliff. Because the grey cliff is fine, but... It's also a grey cliff and can look a little bit on the dull side. We're not worried too much because these things tend to clip into the ground fairly well. So we, we don't need to worry about sort of uh, lowering them down too much. We're going to throw some stuff here. Just making sure we're keeping it on the sand. Nice. Uh, this will, these will also add as um, double up as uh, sources of food, water and fuel. So if we kind of uh, layer the island in these things, then not only do we break up uh, lines of sight, lines of vision, but we also add a ton of uh, resources to the island. So we can survive, if we need to, off of the coconutty goodness that uh, coconuts provide, or we can chop them down and burn them up and sob our dude uh, getting hypothermia. Do I want that there? Probably not. Uh, yep. I don't want it too close to the edge of the, the sea. I want them kind of as if it were pushed up by a high tide, but not necessarily right against the uh, right against the shoreline. So we've added a bunch of palm tree twos. We're going to do the same thing with palm tree three. Just kind of uh, clumping them together at this point. So almost in pairs as we go around the island. So it looks like there's a reason for these things growing there. Uh, maybe a bit of soil under the sand or something, something that they can kind of all grip to and feed off of because plants, ah, what's going on with the camera? The camera's a little awkward, but it's moving in a 3D space. It's essentially a viewport, not really a camera. I think you, um, going back from ah, 3D modeling, which I did years and years ago, not like, you know, Ooh, take off your clothes kind of modeling but more like uh more like i think i used extreme 3d back in the day and you used cameras and, and viewports there so that was a thing and we are adding more and more trees in and it's just like whoa hang on a minute you're adding too many trees too many trees nope that's fine uh let's go too close to too close to the edge i think i don't want to don't them there let's move them back a little bit cool much better so by doing this, the stage is the bit at which, um, which the island stops being a just kind of a, a, a like a sandy mass or a kind of a greeny mass and starts becoming a place where we could be stranded, where we could live for a bit. It's uh, and yeah, foliage way more than you think you need. In fact, if you can hit an item limit, palm trees. I'd be impressed. I've not actually found an item limit yet. So we're going around again. It's like a second pass. Just throwing them in. 
Just throwing them in wherever. Almost at random. Well, actually at random. It's uh, have no real, no real um, thought, I suppose. It's kind of, uh, they're going in. These wider, wider, wider sound the areas. Just kind of uh, clumping stuff together, I guess. There we go. So we've got sort of pathways through here because we're going to be running through here. Uh, but like areas around the around the edge of the shore at that point, and then clumping on the edge uh, ends of peninsulas and stuff. It looks like we've got a lot of trees, but we don't really have that many trees. We don't have enough to make the island really look uh, like it is. Well, like Mother Nature's creation. So we're just going round again. Just keep going round. Uh, we have palm tree four. Now palm tree four is a weird little stumpy, stumpy tree. Um, we can throw it in with these clusters. And just throw it in. Uh, in fact, we grab the toggle there for that one, but that's fine. Uh, we'll throw it in. Then it gives us a nice little, nice little tree that we can throw in with all the others. Again, just give it a quick spin. Quick spin, quick spin. Uh, throw that in, give it a spin. Throw it in, give it a spin. The tiny trees actually serve as a way of blocking a uh, sort of line of sight to things, which you might think, well, that's a bit weird. Why would you want to block line of sight? Well, as you're running around the island, you'll see it as a very small island, unless you put things like rocks and trees and stuff in the way. Uh, at that point, it kind of starts looking bigger than it is because you can't see from one side of the island to the other. It's like, oh, hang on a minute. I can't see over there. We're going to have to move rather than just standing. I mean, if you look at the, the first video that we did when we first had this island, it looked absolutely tiny because, I mean, they're not terrifically big, even though in t like stranded deep terms, these islands are pretty, pretty hefty. Um, they are not like in, uh, I suppose, like real world terms or game terms. They're not that big. So we're, we're breaking up line of sight at this point. Uh, have we been all the way around? Kinda. Uh, we can also use it to mask some of this grayness. Fine. Uh, we're going to put some, put some stuff over here as well. There we go. Now, it's cool. Put another one. Guess over here. And here. And here, just give it a little flick. Cool. Have we, have we been on the way around yet? No. Nope. No. Nope. We'll get a bit more, I guess, tactical once we, uh, once we've done that with this pass. Yeah. So throw that in. Okay. Fine. Now we've got a lot of palm trees down. A lot of palm trees. Not enough to make the frame rate stutter or stop or anything. We got the big. Uh, pine trees, palm trees, so everything's kind of in. And you might think, well, it looks a bit of a mess. Yeah, all right. It does, doesn't it? Uh, now we need to go and pick ourselves a ficus. Oh, yeah. It's one of my favorite trees for, uh, for, for kind of like uh, foliage and, and kind of density and stuff. Let's get a ficus tree too. That's the one we want. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the trouble with this guy is that these these kind of sticky bits sometimes can actually uh, lift up and like one of these might not be attached to the ground. So we need to make sure everything's kind of attached to the ground. But it gives us like a huge mass of foliage straight away, which is really, really nice. Real nice. I like that. I like it a lot. Uh, we'll give it a rotate, see if there's any like better way for it to exist. I think that way maybe. Hmm, I don't, don't like that. Don't like it. Let's get the ficus tree one in there. I want to delete it. Go away. Go away. No, no, no. All right. Uh, if we do this. Yeah. Cool. So we've got a bit of shade coming onto the beach. That's what I wanted. Uh, just make sure that's all clipped into the ground. It is clipped into the ground. We'll do another one over here. And then uh, let's see how far, how rotated is that? Let's do that. Let's pull the roots over. Use the old branches. So the other thing you get is uh, there's a particle generator with these leaves and stuff that come down. But it means that you get quite a lot of area of the island uh, blocked in foliage. 
You can rotate them, obviously, which is what we're going to do here. And here, so we're going to rotate that it's a little bit more upright. Good. And then we're going to do the same kind of array on the island. So we're going to use Fiker Street 2 over here. And you might think, well, hang on, Fiker Street 2 is a bit. We can run through, you can run between these, uh, these stumps, not a problem. Now, there's some items in the world that just don't exist. Uh, some of the ficus trees don't exist, the ones you can chop down for sticks. Don't exist. Where are they? Don't know. Just completely gone. Completely gone. So I'm going to throw another ficus in. There we go. Um, make sure it's level. Whoop. And make sure it's not actually clipped into anything. Let's go up a little bit. Probably rotate that around. There we go. So the branches aren't actually hitting another tree. But they are providing a bit of shade and breaking up terrain. Yeah, that looks kind of cool, actually. Nice. The other thing you can do with the ficuses is to attach them to rocks. Doesn't matter where they go because they're just like um, a little entity there. So you can actually have them growing out of the rock. Yay! Which is what we've done before. And if we angle them over, there we go. Looks like they've kind of uh, accidentally grown here. Uh, let's drag that back a little bit up. And in, so the trunks themselves are. So we've got these roots exposed, and that's going to be mm, is that a problem for us. Let's have a little look. Uh, that looks nice. Ah, real nice. All right. So you just want that, that area over the river to have a little bit of shade on it. A little bit of shade, cast a little bit of shade. Oh, yeah. Um, is it going to matter too much these growing out of the rock? No, not really. Uh, there we go. There we go. So we're standing here and we look this way. We've got this, this tree there. Are we we're going to be this high? Um, probably this high. All right. Yeah, it does look a little bit weird. Let's move that back a bit. Right about now. That's OK. OK, does it look OK at this point? No, because the trunk's kind of clipped at the ground. Pop that in. So the roots are all. Ah, that's better. That's better. Yeah, so it looks like it it wants to be there. It looks like it, it actually uh, has a reason for being there. Good. Uh, we'll do the same over here. Uh, we'll put another one here, just so that we get the kind of signature uh, signature stuff growing over the, the old river look. Nice. That might actually work straight off the bat. Is that all jammed into the rocks? It is jammed into the rocks. Yeah, the, it's just, I mean, we might never see the base of that tree. We might never go to that part of the island. We ne might never look over there. But, but, I just want to know that everything, all, all the items, you can't see that they're kind of floating. You can't see that they're kind of uh, not really alive or whatever. Uh, and we might even just do the same thing. This, let's have a little look. Is that going to look a little bit odd? There, hmm, kind of, kind of, kind of. So we'll drum it down a bit so that touches that. Yeah, and then we can give it a little rotate. Uh, yeah, we want that to be out there. There we go. So we want it to be kind of hanging down, but we also want to be able to get onto, onto the old end of the end of the cliff so we can kind of look out. A oh, widow's walk. That ah, oh, that looks real nice. That looks real nice. That looks yeah. I mean, the terrain's a little bit rough, but that's not a problem. So we've got a lot of the foliage has gone in, and this island is now starting to look a little nicer than it was before. We can actually put another tree there. I like. I'm not going to lie. I do like these uh, ficus trees just for. Uh, heavy, heavy foliage, heavy, uh, heavy sort of, um, what would you call it? Just kind of adding a lot of interest. Uh, I think that palm tree is going to be in the way there. Let's do this. Let's raise up, move it in, move it out, shake it all about, and then probably delete it. No, so should, it should be fine. I just don't want the branches hitting into something, and I don't want it to look like it has no fun either no function or there's some illogical 
sense like it, it it doesn't really belong in this environment uh so if we rotate that and we bring it back a bit i don't want it i just don't want it touching these palm trees so it looks like it's grown out of the ground the tree is not really touching the palm trees it looks like the the little ones might have grown up underneath it which is makes sense as long as they got light they should be okay yeah that's fine it's fine and it just adds something to the end of that that uh spit peninsula uh we're obviously going to do the same here boop and uh, do we even need to rotate that one not really not really so it adds for like the cost of geometry the cost of having an object there it adds uh it kind of breaks up this this green area uh this gray area sorry so if we're standing here and we're like boop, 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 we've got this huge area of green and we've got these trees that break up what was just essentially a ton of rock that we threw in and it's just like oh okay well uh, the rock's there but uh it kind of looks like but now it's like oh no mother nature's uh moved in and we've got this green suddenly breaking everything up so and we, as we look over this area of the island we've got these huge trees that uh, the sun as it drops down is going to shine through them it's going to give us god rays and stuff so it's going to make it look real nice uh so we've got a mixture of foliage we've got a mixture of, of stuff and like from high up it still looks a little bit i don't know it's starting to look like it belongs i i guess is a, a way of saying that um let's rotate that round okay so here one of the one of the ficus tree like sticky bits is sticking out the ground we don't want that uh, so we're going to move that and you know, bring that towards us a little bit and then we're going to drop it down so that everything is actually poking into the ground so it looks like a tree let's make sure that i mean it can be wrapped around the palm trees but we just don't want it clipping through the palm trees that's uh hmm is that okay no let's move it around that's about there ah is that gonna work I'm just kind of struggling with the camera at the moment, just kind of moving it in a 3D space. Yeah, because we've got this kind of reaching out. So we've got this copse of little trees. And then we've got palms. Yeah, that's actually real nice. So that's kind of filled in that area real nice. So this area of the island, which was very, very barren when we started, is now uh, has a lot of interest in it. And we have these trees uh, and these sort of martello tower things on the edges so we can basically do the same thing with this inner area uh, and we can put stuff down here so i'm going to put a ficus here obviously oh well we can't we, well we can't put it off the edge of the map we can put it in the sea i think we discovered that last time so that was a thing we could do uh, we'll do this and then we'll just make sure you see these Roots here are kind of poking out the wrong way, so we'll, we'll rotate it round so they're in the in the actual cliff. Is that, is that, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Gives us a bit of shade. Um, if we go and stand on the beach, yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Don't need too much over there. Uh, we might even put in some shrubs and bushes and stuff. But we're just uh, just kind of breaking up the world, as it were. So I throw the trees in and uh, make sure the world is completely broken up broken up so we do the same thing here making sure because there's one branch that kind of reaches out across the beach um yeah that's going to interfere with the palm trees if we move it back a bit uh is that going to be in the rock it is in the rock we can make it a feature yeah all right so is that now okay as far as the palm trees go sort of uh no no it's, it's hitting a palm all right let's bring it around a bit uh just so it looks oh no it, it really is clipping in there Ooh. all right uh what about there not there what we want is the shade uh and it's look as if it's it's not too too bad it's not too too bad it's just kind of giving a, a canopy for this area of the island 
And we've also got things like, whoop, if we go down, we've got rocks and stuff, which also break up the terrain at the lower levels. Oh, we're going to have to move away from this. The camera is hitting objects. That's basically what it is. You can still move, but it slows down, which is a little annoying. So this palm, palm forest, pine forest, too many peas, too many peas. We'll just throw in some of the big old trees and give them a little bit of rotate. There's not too much to hit here. And yep, we still managed to do it. Uh, there we go. And then we go to Factory 2, Let's throw that in there as well. Give it an old spin. Uh, we'll spin it this way. And then drop it down slightly, just a couple of pixels from there. So that should neatly avoid anything poking at the ground. It has neatly avoided anything poking in the ground. Uh, do another one there. Yep, because they're kind of... There's a weird geometry to them. There's, there's one bit that sticks out more than the others. Do that, rotate it, rotate it back on itself, pull it down the island a little bit, mm -mm -mm, jam it into the ground, have a little look at ground level. Ugh, camera, please, camera, please. There we go. Everything's kind of in the terrain. Nice. And then we can add a few more ficuses, ficus ones. Do that just to break up the old. Now, one's rotated and facing one way, the other one is. All the way in the ground. Oh, I believe it is. I believe that's okay. So straight off the bat, fine. And it kind of uh, it kind of stops us from walking too far this way. Anyway, we don't want to. Don't want to. Um, we we want to kind of use the trees to like fence off areas, not fence off areas, but kind of uh, make areas a little harder to get to. So if you want to block yourself off from from going somewhere where where the train's a little bit dodge a little bit rough then you can do that now the thing about pine trees and deciduous trees is that a pine tree is uh, loves acidic soil and the ficuses probably don't uh, they're all going to have to deal with sandy soil that's for sure but um, where you tend to have pine forests you tend to have not much on the forest floor so we're just putting the ficuses, ficuses on the outside which is cool. We've got these cool uh, bits leaning over the cliffs, which is nice. Kind of dresses the cliffs all right. Yeah, looks a bit more like an adventure game. Nice, nice. Uh, we can do is put another one here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, go down a bit. Down, 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 up, up, down, back, forward, forward, back. Let's make sure that's actually not hitting the cliff, not hitting another tree, but actually gives us this branch here, gives us a bit of shade. Nice. Yeah, that looks suitable. So we have all this green foliage on the end of the island. Uh, we have this sort of blocked in foliage in the middle and then all these other islands have stuff around them, which is cool. So all the main trees have kind of gone in at the moment. We can add all the small things like kwawa, kura, uh, yuccas. So we can th start throwing other things around like uh, resource uh, resource plants. Uh, we'll do a little rotate as we do that. So we'll throw these in. Uh, these are going to do two things. They're going to kind of fill in little gaps where the rocks are. And I'm going to put them near rocks deliberately. So they're filling gaps near the rocks. Uh, we'll rotate them so they're kind of fairly vertical i'll well, give him a another rotate as well uh in terms of giving us access to too many resources doesn't matter does not matter in the slightest if you're building an island for yourself you go for it uh that will kind of uh kind of help you out anyway there's no point in um being backwards in coming forwards i guess uh let's get in so yeah, we're using the using the plants for two reasons: uh, using it to fill in gaps in the island, and also using it to mask off some of this crazy greyness going on. Ah, yeah, looks nice. Looks nice. Looks real nice. So we've got these. Uh, all the yuccas have gone in. Don't remember where they are. If I'm going to be going to be honest, it's. Uh, it's just something that goes in. Uh, anything else? Anything else? If I am going to be throwing stuff in kind of uh, structural. 
The bush. Oh my god. Okay, let's just throw one of these in. This thing here seems innocuous and is a good thing to throw in sort of every now and again. But if I grab something like uh, something small, this thing, look, it's got a huge hitbox on it. It's got a massive hitbox. So if you're putting these bushes in, just like bush and no actual name, uh, just be aware that what you're actually doing is putting in like a bubble on the ground that is going to cause you to be unable to put in um, other shrubby shrubs. Now, areas like this, my favorite things is to find things like the banana. Ananas. Is that ananas? Is banana? Oh my god, I can't remember. It's been ages since I did German. Um, and I think that might be pineapple actually. And just throw in some uh, stuff next to the cliffs. So it kind of both breaks up, but yeah, I mean, you can still walk through the leaves. Uh, so it breaks, breaks up the um, breaks up the ground, ground level stuff, but it also allows you to walk through the leaves. And the leaves are translucent as well, anyway. That's kind of cool. Let's do that. Let's make sure the leaves aren't actually clipping through anything. No, they are not. Nice. Nice. Uh, we don't have any real caves. I mean, we've got that boat in a cave. We haven't got any like real caves in the uh, in the island itself. So that's, um, I mean, what you can do is use these to kind of uh, mask a cave entrance or give it a little bit more, um, I guess, interest if you are if you're kind of that way inclined. Uh, at the moment, we're just tossing these things in as is. They're real nice. So they're kind of another structural item that you can just kind of throw in. They have no real reason. Uh, to be in game, to be in game, other than, other than just kind of looking pretty, looking real pretty. You look real pretty. Right, let's give it a rotate, let's see if we can get it to a point where most leaves aren't clipping through something. Good. Ah, uh, I think we've done quite a lot actually. We've done quite a lot. This thing was looking a little bit bare, a little bit, uh, but I don't really know what's going on. And now it looks kind of cool. So we've got these uh, other structural plants that we can throw in. These guys are real cool because we can just throw them in as is. Um, that's literally what we're doing. We're making a forest floor by putting stuff in the light and giving it a little rotate. So uh, because we've made this I oh, camera, Get out of the tree, uh, because we made this island fairly, fairly smooth. It doesn't really matter. I mean, we could rotate these guys so they're kind of a little bit more upright. There we are. I mean, they will kind of they'll, they'll grow towards the light. They won't necessarily grow upright. So then you don't need to be too too fussy with them. I'm just going to throw them in, give them a rotate so they don't look like they've been uh, popped in. And the other thing you might notice is, wow, oh, what? Oh, okay. It got, it got stuck on geometry. It got stuck on geometry. That's crazy. Um, yeah. What was I about to say? I was about to say something. I don't know. Oh yeah, it might look like the forest floor is completely. It's like oh, it's kind of green and flat and not really, not really that interesting. Well, the thing about this is, when we get into the game, it's go. Well, apart from the fact the light levels are all going to be different, um, the uh, the, the ground's been covered in grass, so you've got to remember all of this will have grass sprites on it. So that's a thing, thing we can look forward to. Uh, the camera zooms off into nowhere. If you hold down shift, you speed up. Uh, but if you clicked into an object and you're free of the object, you zoom straight into the stratosphere. It's a bit of a problem. So we've got this kind of uh, lily thing. Oh, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same plant. It's got a, like a lily flower on it. It's just nice. So what have we done so far? Well, we've put in a ton of uh, a ton of plants. Uh, we've made our island look a little bit more like an actual island. We've smoothed off the outside of the island. And yeah, we've, we've done a lot. We've done a lot of, uh, of stuff. Um, there's a lot of things we need to kind of uh, focus on, like small items. We need to put in a bunch of shipwrecks and stuff, obviously, because uh, that is kind of the... Uh, things for us to explore, the little bread and butter of the game. We also need to put sharks in. 
Now, I don't like putting sharks in because sharks are a pain in my butt. But, but a world without sharks in Stranded Deep is kind of a world without sharks in Stranded Deep. And while it's kind of cool, uh, you still need, uh, you still need enemies, you still need danger, you still need things to kind of, uh, they're a little bit threatening. So we'll have to do that momentarily. Momentarily. Just going to make sure these guys are all in and rotated. We need a ton more plants though. That is definitely something we need. Um, yeah. Whoa, we've done a lot. If we can stand on these, we need stuff on these islands as well. We're going to stand on this island and kind of look back towards, can we get off the, there we go. Ah, that looks, that looks very, very islandy. Nice. You know what? You know what? I think I might leave it there for the time being. So, um, yeah, we'll come back to this. We'll come back to this. We'll put in a few, uh, well, a lot more plants. Uh, and then what we'll do is probably sort these shipwrecks out and kind of do a lot of finishing. And then we'll go back into the game, load this into the world, and then carry on the YouTube series and come here and have a little play and explore and stuff. That'll be real nice. But um, until then... Throw a cheeky subscribe if you're uh, if you, if you're interested in seeing more of this. Tell your friends about the channel because that might actually help us out. Uh, if there's a bell and you want some uh, notifications, definitely hit that. And you know what? You know what? You know what? I will catch you next time. Bye.